Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you had a good week in the market. It is 11 11 22, November 11th, Friday. Market melted up again today. 1% up on the spy. Jimmy unmanipulated today. Very natural movement. Donro has a has an interesting thought on why, and I think he's right. Sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. We have a Twitter you can follow us on at Happy Money YT, as well as a Discord server. Link for those are in the description. Um, there we go. Yeah, the the market is continuing this bear market rally, and it's aggressive. And I think it'll probably keep going. I don't see any signs of reversal yet. I mean, it's a little hot on the hourly RSI. Spy doesn't really seem to care about the RSI too much, though. Um, once it broke this head and shoulders and then broke that high, it was on like Donkey Kong. And I think probably all the way, I think it'll probably fill this gap now. Um, it flirted with 400 today, 39935. Uh, I think we'll have to wait till Monday or Tuesday. And yeah, we'll, we'll just see, look for signs of reversal basically. And until then, uh, I think we're just gonna kind of keep, keep rallying up. <clears throat> Jimmy, pretty big day with it, um, up 4.9%. The interesting thing though is the volume was somewhat light. Yeah, pretty light, 3.9 million. And it just looked unmanipulated and natural. You know, setting up just textbook type plays. We had this cup and handle from yesterday, little handle here. Set up another little cup right here and a little handle. Uh, and then today it just, it melted up, did little flags, bounced off VWAP, looked nice. And Donro said, Maybe because the banks are closed today, all their corruption and fraud to suppress the price, they're not using it. So I thought that was an interesting thought, and that's that seems like a pretty good explanation. The market is free to run without all of that. And I think spies, maybe the market overall is kind of having the, having the same effect. Um, we did futures today. Uh, I think we realized like 2200 again. I, I, it's hard to know because it doesn't really tell me on E-Trade, and since the banks are closed, this, the money from yesterday's futures trades like aren't settled, I don't think. I don't know, it's delayed, but I'll show you guys what we did there. Anyways, I think SPY, yeah, I think we could fill this gap. I think we'll probably get a head and shoulders, maybe get to this FIB level, 412, which would be just about a perfect FIB level from right here, which would be shoulder, head, shoulder, or big crash. CPLI number is low, and we have one more CPLI actually before PAL, so. There's not a whole lot of things that can tamper the market at this point, unless it's some external thing that, that comes up. Um, at this point, the market has room to run and uh, looks like it, it probably will continue to. So Jimmy along with that. Um, today could have been melt up partially from, yeah, the banks being closed, uh, but this is starting to look more, more and more like this action back here right here so if this were to play out it would be by friday that we'd get these big days so that would make that would put us somewhere right in here one of these days um it could happen sooner i mean today was today was pretty good on it volume was low and we we're still rallying up so it's possible we just trade in this range but if we do just have this spike and then we're just trade down here this will be the first time that i've seen this i think in two years where it's done just this and it hasn't done a retest of it, more or less. Uh, we've had spikes, but they've been much smaller. This was one, so it was a totally different type of price action. Um, we've had this, but then it kind of held up there. Never have we had just kind of that spike and then straight back down. I guess January kind of was in a way. Hmm. Is it a smaller version of this? Interesting. Very interesting, actually. This is this is actually the only other time right here where it didn't retest, huh? I just noticed that. Um, yeah. Anyways, so we'll see on the on the daily we still have a bear smack D, so need that to flip. Uh, hourly though, everything's looking good. Um, making this inverse head and shoulders, even head, shoulder, shoulder, right here. So that's good. Um, yeah, looks looks bullish to me. Uh, Monday, Tuesday. We'll just have to see. Borrow fee is still about where it's always been. AMC was ripping up today. 
Um, it might be the leader. Jimmy might follow, potentially. This thing's up 17% today. BBBY, uh, kind of lagging around with uh, Jimmy a bit, but same kind of cup and handle here that Jimmy's made. Um, yeah, futures. So we did, I was doing a mini or micro ES and actually mini ES. And then I was also doing uh, natural gas today. So I was in those ones from yesterday and it gapped up today like 3% and it was real nice. So right here, so I was long on three of them here. Gapped up here, we're up like 1200 when it was up here. And then just based on last time, I didn't take profits thinking it's a commodity. It's just going to kind of keep melting up in one direction. But any kind of news, and we're getting a lot of news with uh, energy and <clears throat> natural gas and oil right now. So any kind of news, and it'll set it off one way or the other. And so I was in it here, and I held till way too long on this rip. So didn't make that mistake this time. And uh, lo and behold, it actually did come down from news. So I closed out. Um, where did I close? I closed out here on this candle, like right here. Once it broke that range on the five minute, um, I was like, all right, I'll close it and uh, I'll re-enter. And it came down, came down, came down. And I almost went back along here, that engulfing candle, and then didn't, didn't do it there, did I? No, I didn't go along. I might have actually flipped one there, I can't remember. But then this massive candle came in and it, went, it was up almost 5% here. And by right here, it was down like 5%. It had a whole 10 percent intraday move um and i looked it up and it yeah it was it was news i believe that was causing it this headline came out basically right when that drop started um this one's tougher rules on methane emissions from oil and gas sector i guess biden was at the epa talking with the epa and at this summit this cop 27 summit in egypt um and so it just basically dumped it so i'm not sure how long this dump will last usually reactions are overreactions and so I'm not sure, but I actually did play this bounce right here. I, I jumped in right here, closed it out here for like 150 bucks. I think I had two contracts um, just because I'm not sure how long this news will play. So then I just left it and I didn't play it at all. Um, it's setting up actually bear flag here and it kind of scared me this engulfing candle on the hourly and then this, yeah, this bear flag on the hourly. And then on the daily, it's got a big red engulfing candle. So um, MACD is still bullish. It's just kind of trading in a range. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, news either way will send it up or down, it seems like. So kind of waiting for uh, to see how that news marinates over the weekend, I guess. So I'm not getting anything of that. I did go back long on a two micro S&P futures to, to hold over the weekend. Maybe it's a bad idea. I don't know. Probably a bad idea. I'm going to do it um, just because I don't always catch it on Sunday and it, I feel like it can gap up pretty quick. So two micro s and futures. Uh, and then today, here we go. Yeah, here they are. Here's the two micros. So I don't know this. This is from two days ago. So I think, I think we're probably up. I don't know. We'll see on Monday what we're up, but I, I did pretty well today scalping. Um, and yeah, I took took profits, which is always good. So I was actually scalping the, the minis, which are the big ones. So I got shaken out of them a couple times and then also ended up scalping some natural gas ones. And then also a couple minis in here, or micros. So on the spy, um, I'm bullish and I'm trying to think where I went in. I don't know. I can't even remember right now. I went down for a couple different breaks. This was a nice move right here off the off this support. Double doji candle signifying reversal as well as it was at a support. So that was a pretty nice entry there. Um, I can't remember if I grabbed it there. I think I was a little late. I think I grabbed it here and then ran it up to here. Um, and then the break of this, this resistance right here, right here would have been nice on these candles. And then you could have pulled out once it hit this resistance or you could have just held through. I ran some of this, um, so once it starts going in my favor quite a bit, I just put a stop limit, basically just above my cost basis for a little profit. Um, so I scalped this on the way up. I think, yeah, I think we made did pretty well on some of the scalps on the way up. Um, 
yeah, with the bigger position, with the the mini, the mini future, it's it's hard to just kind of hold it. Once you once it's gone in your direction, you know, a few hundred bucks, it's easier. But that initial, you know, five ten minutes is like not even maybe just a minute because like oh man, because it, it'll swing, you know, on one of these wicks, it'll be down five hundred bucks on you. You're like whoa. So once it starts going in your favor enough, uh, it's a little easier to hold through it. Um, so yeah, did that and then. That's the futures account. And then uh, on the options, I bought BB. Shout out J-Hart. Uh, options really cheap. Chart looks really nice. Got December 16th, $6 calls. And then GME, I got uh, 27.35 call debit spreads, which actually closed out today for like $100, $100 profit. Um, I didn't, yeah, I'm waiting to go long, maybe till next week. We got WRB, closed it out for a profit. I didn't, it didn't have enough time. Um, there's that close. Bought puts for some more margin, but I think I'm good on margin now. I just got these just in case, and we get margin called. And if I want to do futures on Sunday, got back into WRB with December for 1750 call because uh, WRB looks good. WRB Y, sorry, that one's right here. And then GME, yeah, I just have those those protective puts basically. So if it does start to come out, I could make money on these and close them. 22 strike for next next uh, Friday. But my call debit spread, which I'll probably open up on Monday. Um, I'm looking at a price target on GME for that 35. And if it is repeating uh, this move back here, it'll happen by next Friday. So it could just be on one day or two day. That's 15 days, peak to peak. So I'll probably, I might get more uh, call debit spreads. 21st actually, Monday, we'll see. Um, I feel like it could have a, a its move next week, Tuesday, Wednesday maybe, or even Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, sometimes it runs into OPEX and next week is, uh, and end of the week is OPEX, so options expire on Friday. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on Discord. Have a good weekend. Peace out.